What's up, you guys? Salesboro Pod. This time around, we got Mr. Matisse Fitzpatrick, right? Yes, sir. Matisse Fitzpatrick. All right. Yeah. So we got Matisse here. Um, if you're in this like high ticket sales space and you have been for the last year, you've probably seen this guy around. Um, used to run a sales agency that connected a lot of sales reps to a lot of opportunities. And now he's on to bigger and better things, which we'll get into later. But Matisse, man, appreciate you coming on. Robert, pleasure to be here. Uh, so, yeah, I've been trying to. I've been trying to get you on too for a little bit. You're a busy guy. Um, so hopefully this is a good one. Yes, sir. Make it, we're, make it, we're gonna make it worthwhile. So <laughs> cool. for it. Um, all right, dude. So let, let's let's start from the beginning and, and not like too far back, but like when you when you were younger, like how did you know that this like sales, entrepreneurship, marketing stuff, how'd you know it was for you? Um I mean Truly, in my opinion, I don't. I don't think we we all know. Like, unless you discover this space by someone else, like you don't know. Like, right. that's my personal opinion. When I first started out, I didn't know. I know I wanted to make money because uh, kids in my high school was like, "Hey, like, hey, I want to be a millionaire." Blah blah blah. Like, what well, what people usually say, you know, when they're trying to achieve something. So that that got me going. That got me like excited uh, and kind of competitive because I wanted to like kind of beat them. Be like, oh, okay, yeah. You know, you're trying to do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be better than you at that. So it's yeah. of get make me competitive. Um, and yeah, I discovered I started off with Amazon, then transited well e-commerce, Amazon. Lost a shit ton of money there, shit ton of time. I was like, no, fuck this. I never made any like real money. I, I just lost money up to that point. The real first transition was me going into an online sales schools. Mike Barron starting there, which most of the industry they fucking hate this guy. But hey, it was a good start. Cause it got me like into the industry. And then from there, I just grew saw my own agencies and things like that. Yeah. So when you started getting put onto like this competitive online money space, like were you in, were you in like high school years? Like were you kind of, uh, I was, I was, um, well, it's different in, a, in, I was in between France and the UK. Like uh, I was in boarding school. Uh, but before that, when I first saw it, I was like 15, 16. Okay. I, I was back in France. Yeah. Are you I, from France? I uh, excuse me? Are you from France? Man, I'm from a lot of places. <laughs> Australian, uh, well, Australia, Singapore, France, UK, Switzerland, all those places. And now I'm in Miami, so. <laughs> Damn, dude, that, that's a story in itself, man. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I know, like, the whole time I've known you, you've been in Miami from what I understand. Yeah. So, um, what what is it? Do you like Miami? Like, what is it about, about here versus all those other places? So, I would say... The two best places on earth right now, in my opinion, uh, is Dubai and Miami. Just because, like, the networking, the the mentality. Like, Miami is a mini New York. It's got the the fast paced environment where like people, like minded people are here, especially in the in the online money making space. Like a shit ton of people are here, uh, so that's why it's great connection. That's why I met my business partner Al Johnson, which we recently saw in business, and we're doing like half a mil a month right now, just in that business that we launched like a month ago, month and a half ago. So. Nice. That nice. sort of like the opportunities, the network opportunities, the lifestyle, everything is here. Uh, so that's really why, why I enjoy it. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I'm yeah. loving it. <laughs> I, I know tons, tons of guys over there. I've never been over there, man. I've been to Florida a bunch of times, but never Miami. Um, yeah. I'm in, I recently moved to Austin. Have, have you been to Austin? No, nope. no, sir. But uh, we got some fun and clients that we, that we're going to go up to Austin. Yeah, it's it's like a quieter version of Miami. A lot of guys like in the internet online money space here, um, but sim similar and different. But anyways, man, so you like world traveler over here, which I, I didn't even realize uh, <laughs> settled down in Miami. I bet Miami's a pretty good place for the business that you're running, right? Oh, 100%. So right now, like just explain the, to the audience what I'm doing. Like, well, obviously, before I used to run a, a sales placement agency where I used to well, run a Facebook group with over 30,000 people. And I used to place people in office, get paid for it, blah, blah, blah. Speak to business owners, close them on that. Uh, but I sort of transitioned from away from it just because the sales space, uh, I love sales, but I didn't like selling sales placement, sales training. It wasn't really my passion. Like uh, I was in a position where I had money since I sold the group because I, I wanted to move away from it. So I had like a lot of money. I was seeing a lot of money and I was like, okay, what's my next move? And for me right now, I'm focused on Forex, which is like 
being able to you know, place trades and bet on the market, wherever it's going up and down. And then as I was studying that, but that takes a while to learn. Like you're not going to be profitable yeah. for the first year or six months. So I'm still in the learning process. Haven't made any money from it so far. But what I did do, because I needed the cash, I was like, hey, I, I want to find something else to make really good income since I have the skill set of building up sales team, finding salespeople, creating offers, all that shit that I learned in my prior well, companies, prior courses that I did. Like, So I decided to partner up with Al, which was a connection here in Miami. We started Exotic Car Automation, where his background was car rentals, helping people acquire vehicles investors acquire vehicles and put it on the road to create passive income. So we created that offer. It, it's a, it was already an existing offer on the marketplace, but we're just making it better. Um, and yeah, we're just bringing on investors for ourselves, and we were able to bring in like, well, we have, we have different packages, 10 to 30,000, but like, well, we were able to bring in like so far 20 investors. So we have 20 cars, like exotic cars, in our program that we're like currently financing some on the road already. Like uh, we've got a few Lamborghinis, few McLarens, and we also have a Bugatti on the way. Yeah. Sweet, man. Now that you've like had a little bit of success in this online money space, you ever go back to e-com? No, <laughs> fuck <Any>? no. <laughs> so, and I'll tell you why, I'll tell you why. What I like about the online space, it's high ticket. It's quick sales cycles. Like what I wanted to do, why transition into the offer that I am now, the easiest offer I find, in my opinion, to sell are what, where, where the sell cycle is short, where it's high ticket, and no, it's just like a, a easy sell. And for me, that's investment products that are still kind of in the coaching space, like the, the, the coaching style products, but like high ticket, like where you're selling money at a discount, where you're selling the returns of the investment. That That's the easiest sell for me. Uh, and that's why I partnered up but yeah, with Al where we sound like 30K packages that we sound like hotcakes because they, they see the return. It's a hard asset and they're making five to 10K a month. That's what we're selling, five to 10K a month profit that they're making every single month with the cars that we're renting out for them. Yeah, dude, it, it's so much easier to sell. Like right now I'm, I'm kind of in the same space on a team we sell or we help connect business owners to like uh, investors to raise capital. Yeah all kinds of businesses, real estate, startups, all that stuff. And it's so much easier to sell discounted money than sell like weight loss. Yeah. <laughs> you know, especially like mass market B2C. Um, and I know you, you probably worked with clients in the past with sale, the sales agency stuff who yeah. like had those non-financial ROI offers and they're just way harder. Right. Have oh, you know? so I, I first started in fitness. The first sales I was making was uh, with fitness coach and I'm not going to say who it was because well, he still owes me money to this day, but it was a good experience, um, like starting with him and yeah, le learning the sales process. I mean, when you guys are first starting out in sales, you know, you want to go for the, the offer that you get, like, it's going to be a shit offer and that's fine. Cause you just signed out. Like I was not good at sales a year and a half ago, two years ago. And that was fine. Cause I, I need to pay my dues, get hop on sales calls, close some deals. Even if I was only making 150 bucks per sale, it was still better than just working a full day at a nine to five job because you're not acquiring that skill set. So I was getting used to it. I was fucking afraid of hopping on sales calls. Like I, that, that fear, I, I don't know if you had that, but I, I was fucking afraid of like, oh shit, what's going to happen? I was afraid of dialing, of picking up the phone. I, some days I missed appointments just because I was afraid of taking the fucking appointments. And yeah. then, but I soon like got into it. Once I developed more skill, was more comfortable on the phone calls. And then like things sort of like uh, went all in place. Yeah. How did you know, like, dude, there's so many things out there. Like, um, when you went from like, you know, trying to do e-commerce and you're like, all right, man, yeah. what's the next thing ended up with, I guess, Mike Barron and then put on to the whole sales thing. Like, why didn't you go do like copywriting or like short form editing? Like, why was it sales? Uh, I did, I did copywriting, but the truth is I, I never made any money from it. Like even in copywriting, you have to sell someone on, your copywriting service. So sales is still an integral part of like the service. It's how the transactions are made. You have to have that sales component. So I tried doing it. The truth is I didn't make any money with it. <laughs> yeah. That was my gateway because right before, actually right before Mike Barron, I was working with Leo Olson. He, he's a French guy who used to do e-com like courses, things like that. Uh, he scaled that up. He, he's doing something else now, but 
He would, we had, he had a PR agency that he was working with sort of like a sales agency. I sort of DM setting for, with him for a month before I joined Mike Barron and found Mike Barron. So like he got me into that, like, um, into that world pretty much of DM setting sales before Mike Barron. Okay. How, how long ago was that? Like where you got the first DM setting role? Mate, that was like two to three years ago. Not even that long ago, man. That's crazy. And now you're doing, now you're running your own offer half a mil a month, like month two. It's insane. So you, mm -hmm. what, what's the deal with the Mike Barron stuff, man? I feel like I've, I don't know, like why people like hit on them. I don't know why there's like beef, but like, what's, what's the situation? Uh, I'll tell you this. And this is like pretty much the, the online space wall is people oversell. Sales training is, is, is an amazing thing. Like people, it's life changing. It will change your financial situation. If you apply it, you stick with it for a year, for a couple of years, like you're going to be in a financial, different financial position. But that, that's like one part is a skill set that you need to build up like a great company. But it's amazing first skill to learn where you can make great cash. So what the deal with Mike Barron is he oversells. He's selling the dream too much. Like in sales, you want to sell the dream. Hey, what, what it's going to look like once they're able to get like the product or service that you have, what, what's going to, going to look like like the outcome, basically, you're selling the, the dream uh, of the product or service. With him, he's overselling it and he's not delivering. So it's that distance between, okay, what they're getting and what he's like promising. And, and it's way too big. Like his service, he's promising, hey, you're going to make like hundreds of thousands, like all oh, best skill set in the world, blah, blah, blah. Super easy. Like he's overselling it. And, and it comes across his marketing and people would like get second doubts once they join his program. And the way he was, his marketing was, we were tapping into other competitors groups. So the other competitors were like, okay, this guy's a scam. So they have to throw rocks at him so they don't take their leads. Cause they were paying for people to join their groups and they were, and he was still in their leads. So. Yeah, dude, I, I've seen, I've seen some of that going on and I, I've never looked into it. I've had a lot of people like DM me on his behalf, which is like interesting, but yeah, you know, I can't really speak on it that much, but that's, that's interesting. So he, he does like a sales training thing and like you bought into that, just looking to kind of improve the craft. I don't take it that you oh, were one of those guys getting the field of sales. Yeah. There's a lot of guys out there that like buy into these high ticket programs and they're like, Oh dude, I didn't get this. And I didn't get the result in 30 days. I want my money back. They throw like a whole fit. I don't take it that you were that guy, right? Like you probably just bought it, consumed it, took yeah. the knowledge and went and did your thing, you know? Exactly. Like my trajectory in terms of income, like four years ago, I maybe made, I, I was doing gigs on Fiverr. Four years ago, I probably made the entire year two grand. Damn. The year right after when I, <laughs> I joined sales, I maybe made like 10 grand. Last year I did 200 grand and this year I'm on track for like, I'd say at least two mil, at least yeah. two mil, like personal income to me. That's insane, man. That's insane. So like, why do you think, dude, there's so many guys that get into sales or they get into like some vehicle and they just stay like five, 10 years. And it's like, oh dude, maybe next year I can make 5,000 more dollars. Like, what is it about you where you've just been able to like, exponentially go um well personally I, i'd say i'm a bit like i i want the best opportunity vehicle and, and i'm able to, well as uh andrew tate likes to call it perspicacious enough to to see the best opportunities like you want to figure out like as i said that's my criteria high ticket low sale like short sale cycles someone like easy products to sell like that. That's what I wanted to gravitate towards. Once I was in a position of power, AKA I had the skill set to offer to someone to build something up uh, where we could like find the leads for the, uh, for the offer that we were selling, close the leads and scale it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was able to do. Yeah. Do you think so, the fact that you just know a lot of people has helped like big time with that? Um, yes, yes. And I have very good connections with a few individuals where I was able to like, yeah, just the half a mil was just purely referral, like almost all referral based. Yeah, man. I mean, it's in high ticket sales, yeah, that's the case. You got to know the, the right people for the best offers. But like, 
Mm -hmm. dude even outside of that just business man like who you know it's it's so important and not saying you didn't work your ass off because i know you did but it just makes it so oh no but yeah, bro it's it's luck it's luck it's like being good with the right people you know it's like it elevates yourself like your income everything you know yeah. i wouldn't be the man i am today without like connections i have andrew and bessie kyle farman al johnson like Ed, walter brown like all, all these guys yaman like glenn like all, all my boys um Someone's calling me. Hold on. Call me late. Sorry about that. <laughs> I wouldn't be the man I am today without the connections I have, you know? Yeah. And you, like, hopping on, like, boom. Us partnering up together, doing a pod. Like, all of that is yeah. building connections, you know? Exactly, man. And, yeah, I mean, you and I, like, we've known each other for, shit, it's, almost, it's probably almost been a year now, to be honest. Yeah. And, like, you were helping me out. I was helping you out because uh, we're kind of in that same space and, like, who, who knows like a year from now like what what's it going to be like you and i could be doing completely different things and, and doing yeah. so much better or in the same spot like you never know what it can turn into you know so yeah man that's that's cool so how did you go from like you you bought into mike baron's training to like up the sales game um yeah. to eventually like you got good at sales and then you started a sales agency like when did that happen what did you come to realize to make that happen no, so I first, so whilst I was doing my Barons, I wasn't making much money with him um, still. So I was like, okay, I need to find something else. As I was working on that vehicle, I was always looking for the next best one. So I was, this guy approached me about, hey, you can start recruiting for this company. It was like an insurance company um, and I'll pay you X amount. And I was like, okay, bet. Because we can sell sales training on the back end for my parents program I was like, okay, bet we do that. And I started recruiting, started getting paid there and that sort of grew, but I was still, my, my problem back then, like two years ago was I, I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable selling high ticket. That was my biggest hurdle. It was like, I was charging too little for my services back then. And that sort of, I was stuck at that. Uh, I wasn't even making 10 K back then. I was stuck at that like 2 K 4 K range. Cause I wasn't charging high ticket. I could charge like 10 times the price yeah. for the same service, but I, I just didn't have that mindset for it. So, um, so yeah, I was in Mike Barron. I hope I started recruiting. I wasn't charging high ticket for, I was recruiting for insurance. I wasn't charging high ticket. And then I increased my price because my boy Walter said, Hey, you're charging too little, increase your fucking price. And I was like, bet. And then that's when my current started growing 10 K plus months. I started a group because I was like, hey, I want to control the opportunities for myself. I don't want to be relying on other people to give me the best opportunities. I want to be in charge of that. So that's why I created my group. And that stemmed from like people started posting in the group. I was like, okay, few people are liking uh, obviously the offers in there, business owners, closers, setters, everyone's in there. So let me start like charging for this shit. <laughs> let me start making some money because people are recruiting for free. So that's why I started speaking to the business owners, recruiting, done for you recruiting. And then that sort of grew into what it was uh, until the point that I sold the agency, basically. Yeah. Dude, what's... So those were a couple of pivotal moments. Me the sign, I want to control uh, pretty much the opportunities, having the best opportunities for myself and having access, well, making money, charging high ticket as well. Two best yeah. things I Dude, ever did. I mean, that, that group that you had is such an asset, man. Like... Mm -hmm. You didn't at the time you started, you probably didn't even know that one day you would sell it, right? No, um, no I was like, I'm gonna be in the industry for years. <laughs> Two years, I was like, yeah, I saw a check, I'm, <laughs> I'm bouncing, you know? yeah, on to the next thing, but yeah, that's funny, man. What so nowadays, like, dude, there's hundreds of like high ticket sales groups yeah. when you started it, like, why, why did you do a Facebook group? Like, why not, uh, I don't know, something else? That, that's the best thing I knew back then like best thing i knew was uh the face well, the facebook group and the one thing i i knew was as well it was watching um not Lee Olson, uh, what's his name um the guy from new new york he runs consulting he used to run consulting.com trying to remember his name uh consulting.com uh, he runs school yeah sam school. sam ovens he's from new york yeah, yeah i watched the sam ovens video about like uh, the flywheel of like, hey, saying the more customers coming in, like more people coming into your group, the more Facebook's going to show your group. And it's sort of a flywheel. The more customers are going to be in the group, the more clients you're going to get, the more money you're going to make. So it's sort of a flywheel. So I was like, yeah. And that's 
one of the ways you can continuously grow is having that flywheel in your business. And I was like, oh yeah, the Facebook groups are flywheel. So that's why I was like, okay, I put all my focus into it and in group because yeah. I made sure posts were made every day. I made sure that we were inviting people to the group every day. I made sure that we were reaching out to business owners, business owners every single day and we were doing placements every single day. So that was really the main things that was focused on. Damn, dude. Did you do any like, besides just Facebook recommending it and you invite like going out and inviting people, did you do anything on like other platforms to push people to it? No, no, purely Facebook. That's crazy, dude. And you grew it fast, man. Like how many people were in it when <laughs> yeah. you sold it? Uh, tell me. How many people were, were in there when you sold it? Uh, there were like 30, 34,000 people. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. How, okay, so besides you like sending out connection requests, like what yeah. else do you do to grow a group like that? Like that big, that fast? Uh, honestly, it was just consistency, consistency in the posts every single day. Like we were, we were having 10 posts a day of just sales gigs, yeah. <laughs> sales gigs <laughs> every single day. Like that's what the people want. You know, people yeah. coming into the industry. That's what they want. Sales posts like uh, here and there. Uh, but really it was just like the posts consistently post every single day, the engagement on it, making sure like, yeah, all the posts have likes and make sure we're inviting people every single day, like, and just getting rid of the crap that people post in groups that are like spam. So that was really yeah. the main thing, keeping the quality high as opposed to high as well. So, yeah. And you had a, you had a team helping you, right? Yeah. I, I like, at one point I had like 12 VAs helping me. <laughs> but that that was overkill. Honestly, the group just needed two. But like twelve VAs were outreaching in all the different groups. So I, I, I like if I could army at some point, uh, yeah. like a year ago. But it was a yeah, it didn't didn't make more much sense. So when you like, so you started the group just because you were like, dude, I I just want to control this. And at that time, it sounds like you didn't even really have like the whole sales placement agency like up and going. It kind of no. spawned out of that, right? Yeah, it was just like I was chasing offers all the time. Like, like yeah, you're. I was relying on other people to get me an offer, and that never really works. So I was like, okay, fuck, I need to find something else where I, I'm in control of the offers coming in, and I can, like, if they're great, I can apply it to them. You know? Yeah, yeah, dude. That's so that's what I focused on, and then I was like, hey, I'm I'm making a lot of money because I wasn't making. I was on multiple offers at the same time. Like most salespeople do, like you, you, you have multiple offers to make sure your account is full. So I was like, yeah, I'm not like, I'm making more money from just the placements myself. Why am I like closing for other people? Cause I get a hundred percent of the commission. Right. Whereas like I'm, the business owners keep in 90% of my commission. So I was like, okay, fuck it. Let me close yeah. for myself. So, and, and I just grew the, the business from there. Yeah. How long, how long did it take from you? Like starting the group? to going full time with the placement agency after it started growing? I'd say like three, three months. That's crazy, dude. That's yeah. fucking, that's awesome. And then you, when was that? Like, where, where are we at on the timeline right now? When you went full time with the, the placement agency? That was like two years ago, year and a half ago. Okay. Year and a half ago, but I was still making money from the, the insurance company. I, I left Mike Barron. I left uh, um, his sales training. Um, and yeah, I was making, I, I forget, like a couple thousand a month back then, like two years ago, uh, just from my like sales placement. Mm. Well, with sales placement on the insurance side. Yeah. No I mean, sales placement for sales closes. Yeah. When yes. you, how did you do that, dude? Did you like just direct message people or what did you do for the insurance? Direct company? message. And that, that's what worked for me was just like reaching out to people, making like most people when they send messages, especially if they're trying to like either sell, set up a sales call, like they send a big chunk of text where it's saying, Hey, blah, blah, blah. I can help you do this, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but it's all, it's all conversational, especially for Facebook. That doesn't really yeah. work. They're going to block you real quick. So what we did was a simple framework where it's like, Hey, first name, um, are you looking for closes at the moment? Blah, blah, blah. And then we say, yes. And they say, yes. Okay. So we can help you place an experienced closer on your team. Uh, and if they don't perform, you don't pay, blah, blah, blah. Is that something that might interest you? They say, yes. Also, would you want to connect to for a quick, uh, call so we can discuss the details? Yes. Perfect. Here's the link <laughs> booked <laughs> and they pop up on the calendar. You hop on the sales call. Yeah. Tell me 
a bit more about your situation, blah, 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 boom. And then you, you close them on a 5K, 10K package or whatever. Yeah. And were you were you doing that on Facebook or was it like cold email, on LinkedIn? Facebook, on Facebook. Damn, dude. That's awesome. So I was able to run up like my highest month. I'm trying to remember. Highest month with that company was about like 80, 80, 80 grand to 50 grand. Yeah. And you just that like, was all right. Like is the yeah, it, it was okay. <laughs> that's a, that's a, you just that's placed awesome. reps, put a little guarantee on it. Like you didn't manage the teams or anything, right? No, no, not even. Yeah, that's crazy. And I'm sure you had people on your team like doing outreach on your behalf and you kind yeah. of systemized it, built it out. It all started with the Facebook group, man. It all started with Mike Barron. <laughs> it also yeah, it also with Mike Barron. It all started with Leo Olson and a friend that recommended him me to apply for his position. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I'd be in a completely different space, you know, like a different place. Yeah. The recruiting space is, is weird, man. I feel like a lot of people, like nobody, nobody grows up and goes to school to like be a recruiter. Like it's, you kind of just like end up there and you're like, Oh shoot, dude, like this is kind of a lucrative opportunity. If I can do it, like do it more and figure it out. Yeah. And like, even me myself, like I do some of that work. It's not my focus, but um, yeah, dude, I, I know like if it's something that you put your, your mind and attention to and start systemizing outreach, you can grow it to be like pretty solid really income big. stream pretty fast. So yeah, man, I, I doubt you ever saw yourself getting into that space. It no, just, no. Just happened, right? It, it literally just happened. And I mean, it taught me a lot of skills because I mean, recruiting is a form of sales. It's just off that it's recruiting sales people and sales like just recruiting for your company like the, there's the front end sales this is more of a back end sales where, you, where you're recruiting people to run the systems in your company yeah so i mean both are needed and it's very helpful to to learn recruiting and do recruiting just because that's going to teach you more about sales and sales and so on and so forth you learn in sales it's going to teach you about recruiting because it's the same shit yeah before you had a an offer to sell the agency like what was what were your plans with it? Like, were you thinking out like, oh, maybe maybe in a year or two I'll sell it, or were you like, I'm gonna scale it to X amount per month? What were your plans? So six months before I actually sold it, I wanted to sell it six months before. But at, back then, I didn't have my next opportunity. I didn't have my next thing that I was gonna do to go to the next level. Because yeah. for me, it makes no sense to leave the vehicle that I'm in right now to move to a lower, like smaller vehicle. Yeah. So I was like, I didn't have that vehicle back then. And well, six more, when I did sell my company, I had Forex and this guy that I met offer ice in the third, he manages a couple billion uh, in the Forex markets. And that was someone I was comfortable like learning from because I, I'd started three months prior, like the Forex markets. So I was comfortable making that transition and leap of faith. that Okay. Uh, Cause I have money from the company. I'm going to have a shit ton of my, my bills are going to be set for the entire year at that point but I wanted to find my next offer and my next opportunity. And I was moving into the Forex markets yeah. where he's making a shit ton every single month, like millions. So I was like, bet. Was this, was this a guy that you know, or like a program you bought into? That was a referral that like, he's only for referrals that you meet him. And he was a referral. I don't know how the guy find him, found him originally, but he was a referral from a friend that got profitable in Forex. Thanks to him. Yeah. And he was just giving back basically. Yeah. And now he runs his own like Forex bot uh, for with uh, Andrew Bess. He was a close friend of mine. They, they partnered up on a, on a bot and they're scaling that. Yeah. You, um, a Andrew, like I, I spoke to him before and a couple of people I know, man scaled an offer from like zero to whatever it's at now. Like crazy. Now it's a two mil a month. Two mil? A month. Yeah. That's insane. And and I've heard his story too. I actually listened to him on the Ryan Pineda podcast a while back. And um, I know you had like a pretty good role in like sourcing the sales team for him and like helping him out with that. What a, you know, for anyone who's running their own offer right now, like how the hell did he go from zero to two mil a month in like this short time, like sales wise? What what did he do to make that happen? Um, I mean, I, I'm sure he could answer better than me, but for him, what I've seen him do is really just the YouTube ads, like having a good YouTube system. Like, well, just before, uh, when I first met Andrew, cause I, w I went to his penthouse in, in San Diego about a year and a half ago, he was just starting out that program. He was selling, uh, for a sales guy like that. I was also selling with, 
Um, he was selling the sales training. So he had that sales skill set. He had that. He was good right. at sales. Um, but yeah, he was just starting out the program. He was making sales himself. Like he, he personally made 50,000, 100,000 by himself before he ever scaled a team with the ads. Mm -hmm. And that was just working through Facebook, Facebook referrals, things like that, working with connections. He was able to grow 50 to 100,000, which is an amazing baseline in a business to be able to like scale with a team. Cause like, right. if you're not making yeah, 50 to 100,000 a month, you shouldn't hire a closer just yeah. cause the closer can make 10% of whatever the total income is anyway. So it's only five or 10 grand. They, they don't can be pleased with less than that. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you so he started that. Oh, I just finished up. He started that like once he like had all the systems in place, he, the delivery was there to like get them credit cards, 50 to 150,000. He had that system already there. He, he bought a bunch of courses on the subject. So he was, he knew how to do delivery and he was working with a cu couple clients. And then from there, he, he had, once he had the system in place, he paid Lucas Lee Tyson for YouTube advice uh, on how to run YouTube ads. And that's where things blew up. And he, now he's doing like, he's spending half a mil plus a month on ads. That's crazy, dude. YouTube ads is a whole nother beast, man. Yeah. If you can, if you can crack that, um, you, you, for what you're doing now, you guys running YouTube ads or no? Uh, for our business right now, no. Okay. No YouTube ads. Literally, what we have is partner networks. So just like biz buy sell type of sites, people that want to buy companies, we put we list on those kind of sites. Mm. And that's a great way to get leads if you guys run e-com, things like that. Sort of on a cover. I'm giving you guys trade secrets here, but but no, yeah, that's dude. that's a great way we get leads. Uh, but yeah, no, honestly, most of all these right now just referral based, just because we have an amazing offer, amazing guarantee on, on what we're doing right now with the exotic call automation. Yeah. When, when you guys do take it like mass market and you start running some paid traffic, like, do you have a, a plan for like, oh, I think we're going to start on like Instagram and then grow there or like Google, YouTube, like, what are you thinking? Uh, like if I were to scale an offer, I mean, if you guys are working with a low budget, I'd say, well, it, it depends. It depends. Like for me right now, our getting clients is too easy. Like getting 30 K hundred K clients is too easy just because we have the ability if they have a good credit score to get them funded for whatever amount our offer is. So that that's like something that they, most people don't have is the ability like to get people funded. And we yeah. know Al, He's been a lender for 30 years. So he's able to like work around get a, the financial system, figure out how we can get them the money so they can pay for whatever we need them to pay. Hmm. So yeah, man. That, that's, yeah. So it's a key to what we're doing. That's, but uh, I would say for us, the partner networks, partner networks, and maybe Facebook, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. And then YouTube, YouTube is really, if you want to scale big and you have like a, a mass market ticket offer. Like for us, we're not looking at, we, we can't scale our offer that big, like his delivery is right. key. Right. Yeah. So YouTube is for like, if you want to scale big mass market, Facebook, Instagram, maybe more like niche down. Yeah. You know, smaller like, budgets, smaller budgets, easier to like get some faster. instant sales. YouTube takes more optimization, but long-term like YouTube, like once you set an ad up, it's there for a year. Like if it's good, yeah, six dude, months a year, you're good. Usually, I mean, just from being on YouTube and knowing guys in the space, like the guys who are advertising on YouTube, like they're doing big numbers. Yeah. So that's interesting, man. So like going back to the the sales agency, man, how do you, how did you, how did you like evaluate this when it, when it came time to sell, sell it? Like, were you like, ah, you know, I'm whatever just comes in and it sounds good. Like I'll probably do it. Like, were you ready? Were you kind of tired of it? Were you ready to get out? Like, can you yeah, man, I was, I was tired. I didn't like the industry no more. Like it was, it was just a personal thing where I didn't feel like it was just a drag to wake up in the morning. You know, like it wasn't something I was excited about. So Dude, you were, it, it just ass, wasn't. Man. Yeah. I, I, I loved, I loved the start. Like you got me to where I am to the, like where, where I am today, but it, it wasn't my next move. So I wanted to transition out of it, find something better. And as I said, like investment products is what I love. So like, <laughs> that's what I sort of transitioned into, like just selling investment products. Yeah. What was it like when, you know, you, you got an offer in, you, you know, at one point accepted the offer and then the next day it's like, 
it's like, all right, dude, I'm free. What, what do I do now? What did that feel like? Um, first couple days I was like, how, how did it feel like kind of It felt like, wow, because <laughs> I had a big chunk of, like, I had a big chunk of cash, um, from the sales. So I was like, damn, um, it felt good for the first day. Then I was like, oh, mm. yeah, it kind of, I, I don't know. It was, a, it was a weird feeling. Like it was excitement. It was like, ah, uh, kind of bored, kind of, kind of everything. All the emotions, like, no, I wouldn't say scared, but like anxious kind of like okay what's gonna happen next you know like all those feelings but it's cool yeah it was a cool like, uh cool moment like but it, i just relief as well i like, relief hey i'm i'm good and then in the back of my mind did i make the right decision did i quit like too early yeah. like that those kind of like thoughts came in my head but i was like no i, I know what i want to do you know yeah you're probably just like all right time to get back to work let's do, let's yeah. do the next thing <laughs> pretty much yeah I, I mean, I've had that as well. Like, you know, you have a, you have a record day and then like that evening, maybe you go out and get a nice dinner and you're like, damn dude, I'm, I'm the shit. And then yeah. the next day you're like, all right, time to start over. You know, that, that's the thing. Like, like the, your mentality resets pretty quick every single day. You're like, shit, whatever you achieved yesterday, it doesn't matter. Like it's today now. Yeah, so, dude. and then your, your baseline for what is just like normal. It just goes up and up and up yeah. and up. Not not for everyone, but for guys like you and I who are kind of wired to just like put your foot on the gas and, and go like, dude, I mean, you eventually find yourself having a, an exit, a liquidity event, yeah, building a half a million dollar a month business. I'm not I'm not there yet, man. I haven't made a half a million in a month yet. Um, not anything, <laughs> close to that, but yeah, um, yeah man, it, it's just like a matter of time, meet the right people, keep learning connect like connecting with people and yeah dude you're gonna get you're gonna get far man um, exactly shit man so how, i'm curious though the forex thing like dude there's there's so again like i asked you earlier like oh there's copywriting and short form and all this stuff going around you chose sales there's all this other stuff going around did you choose forex simply because of like that referral that was made to yeah you? Just made simply, sense. simply, because I, I I had no clue I'd be in that industry either. You know, I had no clue I'd be interested in it. At first, I was like, no, I hate like just looking at graphs on a on a fucking screen. But like, yeah. he sort of opened my eye to it and the potential. Just when I see when I see money, I'm like, bet. Like <laughs> yeah. I saw his real accounts. I saw like everything was legit. Like I, he his friend that uh, my friend that he taught is now like super profitable with forex. Got multiple millions like in terms of accounts that he's managing and. Yeah. Yeah, so it, like the the real the proof is there. So I was like, me not taking this opportunity is a massive loss, like overall. So I was like, the opportunity vehicle was so great, and he was going to show me the way. So I was like, bet, like let me just focus all my attention and energy onto that. But let me just preface this right now with everything I'm doing in the in the exotic car business that I saw with Al, that's taking the time away from the forex that I'm meant to be studying. So I mean that's pros and cons. Like I'm I'm getting back into it. But yeah, the last couple of weeks were crazy with all the clients that we're bringing on, like the way we're scaling up so yeah. quick and the warehouse that we need to do, the logistics, the delivery, the funding, like uh, everything like in between. Um yeah, every every day clients blowing on my phone. So we have to deal yeah. with all that with with you and forex is are you like are you looking to just like play super aggressively and like grow it or are you more so like managing like steady steady growth type stuff no like i'm looking for steady growth uh, that's it like steady consistent growth like i know it's a, it sounds crazy compared to other industries but like five to ten percent a month that's it I'm not looking yeah. too crazy yeah yeah i mean for for forex and like guys in crypto, I don't know all that much about crypto. Like I, no, I know the, the base stuff. What's that? The crypto, I have no fucking clue. <laughs> Haven't yeah. touched crypto. Like, no, like yeah. I just know about, <laughs> I, I just trade one Forex pair. That's it. Like uh, Euro USD, uh, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. That's the only thing I'm fucking trading. Um, yeah. So That's yeah. Usually, did, you, did you ever have like a, a day trading? Like, period back in the day no. no no 
I think no, he just, he just told me, Matisse, you're going to be good at this strategy, follow this strategy. And that's all I've ever done. So all, all the rest I'm, I'm not too concerned about or educated on. Yeah. I, I think like the guys who do really well in, in Forex or like day trading or crypto, it's like they focus on one stock or like one thing, this set time, and they just yeah. do it over and over and over. And then they get, they get to a, a point where it's like almost hard to believe that it's like, holy shit, you made this much money from this thing that you j like just trading this one hour per day, whatever. You just get really good at it. Just like business, dude, like with your agency, just yeah. doing it over and over. So when you see a pattern cool. enough, like it's easier to replay the same pattern. Like is obviously situations are different, but you see like, like uh, at least in sales, like the same framework, same movement like is, is going to be is going to create repeatable results yeah i know a lot of guys now that get they've gotten into sales they made some money and now they're kind of looking at like the next vehicle or like place to deploy the money while they continue to stack yeah. cash if someone wanted to learn forex where where would you suggest they do it i mean there's a lot of guys online like alex uh forex alex i think his name is on uh on instagram He's good as a day trader. He's, he's doing good for the industry. A bunch of other guys. Um, I mean, in the, I like Forex, but it's not for everyone. You know, there's a lot of shit involved. Yeah. Um, so where can they learn it? I mean, yeah, Alex, um, you could be, you can speak to me. I can refer you to uh, my guy, uh, Offer Ison the Third, who's, who's my mentor um or you can speak with andrew's team and they have a boat bot that offer created and you guys can like get like money there uh mm -hmm. from just a, a, a bot trading using his strategy and that's producing two to two to five percent ten percent a month depending like yeah. you won't lose the maximum you could lose is like two percent yeah on are account. you and you are lose. you using like ai and stuff in your trades no uh, I don't. I don't know shit about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, for sure, it's super. Just complex. me looking at a fucking chart, seeing the patterns, placing a trade based on the well, ball. It needs to be within my 10 a.m. to 11:30 a.m. If I see my pattern, I execute. If not, I call it a day. That's it. Black and white. It's that easy. Black and white. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Um, let's see. So now you're you're on the uh, exotic car grind, like. Yeah, I, I could see the natural progression. I could see like how all this stuff led up to that. Um, what's uh, what's different about running? Like clearly you're, you know, you're running an offer, but you're not like, you're not pushing mass market. It's really like partnership based. What's yeah. the difference in running a business like that when it's like heavy fulfillment versus like coaching offer? And by the way, you said this was done for you right now or done with you? Uh, for the exotic car automation, all done for you. Okay. So that, that's why that it's the easiest. It's super easy to sell, harder to fulfill. And that and that's what we have right now. Just because the guarantees we have, like if they don't make the car, if the loan, if the car doesn't run out and the loan payments on it and the, the car payments on it, well, sorry, the, the car payments and the insurance payments on the car on that, because we put it under our commercial insurance um, coverage. Like if those are met, we cover those payments basically through our program. So the car investor, and it's a two-year long program, so they have basically zero risk. The worst thing that can happen is the car doesn't get rent out, get rented out, but, but in best case, it makes five to 10. So you guys like, you but guys buy the answer car? your question, yeah, we no, we use their, um, they, the client personally finances the car in their name. Mm. or business name so we use their credit to finance any vehicle because mm. we have the relationships with the banks the partners the the dealerships all of that so it's a it's it's hard to like it's a completely relationship-based business because we like we have the ceos of banks that we're working with to do the financing that we personally work with and they know us for years like they know how for years yeah. so yeah it's it's a full-on system but to answer your question about the coaching and how, how it's different than uh, than what I'm doing right now is it's harder to sell the coaching, slightly easier to fulfill. 
like long term. Like it's less, <laughs> it's less of a. The cycle of delivery is slower. Is is much tighter for us. Yeah. You got fucking two years of delivery that we need to keep up for them to be satisfied. For coaching, it's just like yeah, a couple months in, this year results great. Let him, uh, yeah. let him go. Pretty much. On to the next sale. On to the next sale. Like no need to deliver for them anymore, or unless yeah. there's an issue, and then you come back to you, and then you help them. Right. So you you've been doing that for two months, and you've already grown it to where it is. Like, what's what's the goal with that company? Um. To maximize, like we're, we're looking to maximize, fully maximize the Miami market. After that, where we we got a gold automation. That since my God, <laughs> a gold West Africa gold automation. So basically, what that is is we have we're buying gold from West Africa. So I'm I'm flying out to at, at West Africa next week. We have relationships with the president of Liberia, where we're able to buy gold at a discount, like thirty thirty four thousand whatever, 32,000, whatever. And then we sell it to Dubai for 72,000. So double the price. Mm. And you're, you're like, and we repeat you that, we do that with investors. Okay. So you have investors that come in and like help with that. Like, no, we haven't launched it. Like right now, all that we're doing is we're connecting the buy and the seller together. And we yeah. just get a, like, we're doing 400 K a month just for that. Not, not me personally, but Al's doing 400 K a month. I'm not even in the car business the gold automation that we have. But we're looking to open that to investors where their returns would be 100, 100% returns every month, for 50% returns every month. Because you're buying, we're, we're buying and selling for twice the price. Like we're yeah. buying it, for off the price, selling it. <laughs> we're that's, cr that's crazy, man. Why, what, why, uh, why do you call it automation though? Like, what's It just the, sounds uh, sexy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, Internet marketers just slap automation at the end of anything. Like for me, it sounds sexy. I'm like, okay, Google automation. Yeah. Like what, what is, what, it sounds curious, you know, Google automation. Tell me more about that, you know? Yeah. I saw it on your story. You said heading out to Africa and then it said hashtag. I don't know if it was a hashtag, but like, Google yeah, it was a hashtag, yeah. I was like, what the hell is this dude doing? That's, that's <laughs> you're like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you're like, you're connecting, you're making moves. So I was like, all right, he's, he's making moves. But I was like, dude, I've never heard of gold automation. What is that? Exactly. So, yeah, no, but basically we're buying and selling like gold and it's all done through the banks because we're not touching the gold. We're not seeing the gold. It's literally digits on a screen. We buy here, we sell there. We already have all the relationships between the people shipping the gold, the gold mines, all that. So it's basically like the car business, except it's, we're looking to do 10 mil a week. That's crazy, dude. So, <laughs> Ten right. a week of buying gold. Now, here's here's a real question, man. This guy, your partner in these companies. Yeah. He, you said he's been like lender for thirty years, um, and he's like established, and he's been able to do a lot of stuff on yeah. his own. Like, why why did he choose you as a partner? Like, you're like this young dude. Like, what what did he see in you? I mean, at first, he knew that I was good. Um. I don't know if you know Bonnie Face Agunti. I don't. Bonnie, like you haven't seen. He's a, he's big in the e-com space. Like we, I met him with his friend uh, Bonnie Face, who's a it's a marketer, e-com guy, like uh, ClickFunnels guy. So we we first met there, and at first I didn't want to like necessarily partner up with him, but I wanted a Lamborghini. I was like, hey, I got to exit my company. I want to get a Lamborghini. I know he could get me a Lamborghini uh, for lower like interest every single month and like low deposits. So I was like, fuck yeah, I'm, I'm bet. So that's where we sort of developed that relationship. Cause I wanted a, a car myself. I wanted to yeah, show off <laughs> in front of the brokies, you know, <laughs> no, but I wanted a car. So that's sort of where uh, the relationship grew. And then he was like, Hey, I'm, I want to start this car. I want to be doing the coaching because Bonnie, the guy in the internet marketing space was sort of telling him for years, Hey, start a coaching business, start a coaching business, start a coaching business. So at first he wanted to start a coaching business, but I was like, Al, no, you're like, offer so great. Let's just do a done for you offer. And that's how we sort of packaged it. Within the first couple of weeks, we did like, we did a hundred grand the first week. And he was like, holy shit, it's real. <laughs> yeah. And then it, like, he saw the money coming in. That's where he was like, oh shit. Uh, but he knew, he knew what we were saying is right. Like, and so far, like we scaled so big. He's like, wow. And now I'm coming into... I'm helping to basically create the offers, do all the fulfillment, working with the investors, all that shit, bringing all the investors, bringing everyone on, um, 
doing credit partner deals where we're taking people with a great credit, we connected them to a business, an age corporation, and that has two years of tax returns, which is super important, two years of tax returns that are positive, and a great credit score, 750 plus, we're able to raise three mil mm. per person that we do that with. So we go from yeah. three of those, that's nine mil right there that we're raising uh, for, for us to use. And then we give them yeah. a 50K check. Yeah. Dude, that's, <laughs> but, that's like but that's what next creative, level, bro. That's cool. Yeah. That's People cool. don't know that about credit. That's why I was like, it's just recently that I, I really like discovered the power of it because we're raising so much fucking money. We're raising nine mil in the next like couple of weeks. Yeah. Through SBA loans. Like the banks aren't really giving much 0% anymore, but like loans, we're able yeah. to raise the, do as many fucking loans as we can. Like free, free to, it's five to five to 8% across like three to five years. We're taking that shit all day. Like we're weighing that up half yeah. a mil each, each approval. Boom. Dude, that's that. I mean, that's just a, a different game. I think because dude, they don't teach you that in school, bro. They don't teach you that. Like bro, you no. have to know somebody who's like, Hey, I kind of like you. Let me tell you about this credit thing. Something like that. Right. Yeah. Um, so what are you going to see? You're going to learn course, but we're, we're doing, it comes from experience. And that's why like, you want to always connect yourself with, uh, my, 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 my guys is like, Al is, is 47. So like, he's got those years of experience in the trenches of doing loans, being in the yeah. car rental business, years of experience that you can't, that you only tap into if you're into that, like, uh, yeah. if you know the right people, you know? Dude, that's crazy, man. That's, that's exciting. But we also vibe. Like, we're also the same mentality. We grew up the same way, like in a way where his mom was sort of the, the leader of the family. Is that like, not so much, but like we, we grew up in the same kind of upbringing, even though it was different places because he's from Liberia. I'm from like fucking Switzerland, uh, Australia, France, like Singapore, like a shit ton of fucking different countries. But we grew up in a, in a similar way, similar upbringing. Yeah. Where do you, and I know we got to, we got to wrap it up here. Where yeah. do you see this? Where do you see yourself as an entrepreneur? Because I know like you got a couple of businesses. Where do you see yourself in one year from now? And where do you see yourself five years from now? Bro, <laughs> even six months from now is a, is a, is a long time, but uh, a year from now, mate, I, I just know that the goal automation, just because with, with the amount of money we're bringing in right now, like, just from that business alone, I would be bringing in like two mil a week in a year. Just in goal, a, not, even, not even the car rental. Just goal, automation. Two mil a week, person. This like by this time next year. Yeah. Dude, what about <laughs> five years? Five, bro, 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 five years. I don't even know. Bro. I don't you can't even. Know. even you bro, can't there's even so many like... opportunities. Once you're in, once you're in, it's like when you first start, like things that just grow. Uh, but but that's just money wise. Money wise, I, I like the goal automation. Like if it pans out the way it pans out, like that is right now because it's pain our shit ton of money. I'm coming into deal We package it for investors. If that all goes well, nothing breaks down, which I mean, something will, but if we're on the trajectory that we're going on right now, just with the kind of deals that we're doing, just in the gold alone, not even like the car automation, car automation, that's going to scale. We're going to have, we already have like 10 mil worth of cars, uh, but we're going to add next year. We're going to have a Bugatti location in Dubai. Mm. Like just, Bugatti car rentals, 30K a day, get a Bugatti, yeah. <laughs> drive a Bugatti around in Dubai. Uh, Crazy. But, but that, those, and then we'll bunch of fucking investors like everywhere. So, man, a year, that, that's a year from now. Uh, me doing more kickboxing fights. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. Me having a, I'm growing, I'm growing YouTube. So hopefully by then, like I'm posting free videos a week. So 100K subscribers. I guess it's reasonable. Uh, what else? More kickboxing fights. A win. Kickboxing fight victory. Uh, no, just keeping training. Uh, yeah. And then five years from now, bro, I don't, I don't even know. I, I need at least five years from now, Bugatti. I, I, I need something. I don't have a Rich Amelia. I don't have no watches. So a couple months of uh, watch, but. Yeah. I don't know, bro. But the, I I know a year from now. I know a year from now, we have a different place. 100%. You might 
you might have a watch or two a year from now. <laughs> I need a Richie, you know. I can't be a trader without a Richie, but yeah. Okay. Uh, and last question though, um, Miami's the place. You see yourself being there for a while? Oh, 100%. I ain't moving. The one thing about me is I hate traveling. You know, like I travel the fucking world, so I I, I don't know. Yeah. Kind of weird, but I don't I don't like traveling that much unless it's for like business and I know I'm getting paid. Yeah. A shit ton of money for it, so that's it. <laughs> so I'm staying in Miami for a long time. It's my hub. I love the city, love the people, love the food. No, the food food is mid, but it all tastes the same. They can't they can't add savor. There's no flavor to. It. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with the food here, but <laughs> Miami's a great spot. Connections, everything, the views, oh, yeah. the the environment. I'm I'm moving into a better penthouse, like a downtown Brickle, uh, right on top of like uh, Sexy Fish. Like a, which is like a nice restaurant here. So yeah. I'm moving into like 10 K a month apartment, like next on the 15th of this month. So I'm, I'm moving. Cause like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I need a better yeah, place man. to park my cars. It needs to be safe. So, so yeah, yeah. Miami's the shit. Miami's the shit. I, I can't say, you know, good things yeah. about it. Minus, minus the food. But anyways, where, uh, where do you want to send people, man? What's <laughs> like, the best platform? Um, I would say you can check out my YouTube, just Matisse Fitzpatrick on YouTube. You can check out my Instagram, Matisse Fitz with two uh, Zs at the end. Um, hit me up. Like if you guys are interested in text me, like role automation, Forex mentor, text me those, like whatever you're interested in or exotic car automation. If you guys are looking to get a car yourself or have us write it out for you, we can do that. Uh, text me right. gold, exotic car automation. Forex, and I'll be able to connect you with uh, the, the right people. So best way to reach me is my Instagram. And then if you want to learn more from me, what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, sort of how I'm documenting my journey, just YouTube, Matisse Fitz. So. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to go. I haven't seen your YouTube. I'm going to go check it out. But I'll link all that stuff below. Uh, I think that's it, man. I appreciate you coming on. It's been good catching up. Um, yes, sir. I'm excited, to, I'm excited to see where you take it. May I... Uh, yeah, I don't even know. Like, that's why it's hard for me to answer five years from now. Because fuck, I, I don't even know at this point. Like, it's it's a guessing game. But yeah. I, know, I know one thing. Like, I'll be working hard, scaling shit up, doing my best. So, and uh, yeah, hopefully this was a, a value to your audience. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's go. And Bill, yeah. appreciate you having me on. Awesome, man. Appreciate you. We'll talk soon. Let's go.